Hi everyone, this is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering. Today we're going to do something totally different. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion lately about the recycling of plastic bottles, whether it's worth the effort. Obviously it's a very complicated topic, but today I'm going to use the ANSYS CS selector, which is a huge materials database, to uh, put up some numbers and let's see uh, whether what the impact of recycling versus not recycling is. Uh, CES Selector uh, fundamentally has a vast library of materials. So if we look at, for example, uh, PET, which is the material most uh, single-use plastics are made of, we can take a look at the material properties. We have pricing for this material, mechanical properties, but also, uh, importantly for this particular discussion, its uh, durability and recycling end of life as well as processing energy, CO2 footprint, and water. So this tool has uh, this information on all of the different types of plastics available and we can look at this in a variety of ways. For example, uh, one of the things we can do is, is uh, maybe we can select the right type of plastics. So if we look at plastics in general, uh, we can decide to limit the plastic to food, food grade plastics. So that limits our plastics to food grade. Then we can plot a chart. So maybe we're primarily interested in uh, how much energy, uh, how recyclable it is. So let's um, look at maybe recycling end of life and uh, CO2 footprint for recycling uh, on one axis. And we can look at processing energy and look at how much energy it takes to create it, uh, how much CO2 it, is, uh, it, it requires. I think I look at primary production here and CO2 footprint. So this creates a, a graph for me, for me to compare different amounts of uh, CO2 for recycling and primary production. And obviously some types of plastics uh, consumes a lot less CO2 than other types of plastics. So the range here is everything from uh, less than one kilogram of uh, CO2 per kilogram of plastics made to something that's on the higher end of roughly 20 kilograms of CO2 when we look at specialized uh, materials like PEAK and PFA. And we can uh, highlight a few of these. So if we look for the one that's typically used in plastic bottles, right, let's uh, highlight this one. So that's our PET unfilled over here. Right, it takes about two kilograms of uh, carbon to create a kilogram of uh, PET up here. And uh, when we recycle it, we can, uh, it's, it takes about a kilogram and a bit. So this gives you an, a way of, ch of ch selecting different uh, materials, but we can also do an eco audit. So I'm going to call this uh, uh, my water bottle. Okay. Uh, the material, we're going to make one water bottle, and the material we're going to use is um, PET. Right here, it'll be unfilled amorphous PET. Uh, it'll be about 10 grams, and the primary process will be a polymer molding process. Uh, no secondary process. We're not going to machine or anything, and we can either send this to a landfill or recycle it. Okay, so let's first take a look at sending it to a, to a landfill. I can look at a detailed report here. So it shows me that it's this particular material, right, it's going to, to produce one of these bottles, it's going to take about one megajoule of energy and the, a carbon footprint of uh, 42 grams to um, to make this one bottle, right? So this is this is a a 10 gram bottle, and it's going to take 42 grams of carbon to make it. So obviously, uh, it's quite a bit. Now, what if we decide to recycle this? Okay. So by recycling this bottle, it's still going to take about 42 grams, but now at the end of life potential, we can recover 
maybe 1.2 grams of it. So if we were to use this material that's been recycled in other products, we're going to sit, we're going to reduce the the carbon footprint by about a quarter of that by recycling. However, obviously, uh, oftentimes today we don't just uh, recycle it directly on site. We have to ship it somewhere. So we can. I can assign a shipping. So let's say we're going to do ocean freight, and I'm in California, so I'm, I'm going to send this to Asia somewhere. That's about 10,000 kilometers away. And we can take a look at the impact of that. So sh shipping this one bottle 10,000 kilometers uh, for transportation is going to use another 0.1 uh, gram of, uh, actually, 1.3 1 grams of uh, CO2. Um, so on the grand scale of things, shipping it across the world didn't really change my carbon footprint very much. A big, big factor of carbon footprint for this is, is uh, by far dominated by the material, as well as manufacturing carbon footprint here. Um, and obviously recycling, if we were to use this for other things, it would dramatically reduce my carbon footprint. This shows you the ability to quickly do some reports here. We can also do a comparison. So I have a few other ones here. For example, I have um, I have a uh, steel water bottle. Right? We can use stainless steel, forging, machining, the, 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 the weight of it, as well as uh, reuse, reusable plastics. And we can compare all these together. So you can see we have uh, materials. Water bottle, our standard recycled water bottle here, a reusable plastic water bottle, stainless steel water bottle, and a regular single use. Obviously, these two are reusable, so we can use them multiple times. Um, if we look at the details of this plastic water bottle here, you can see that we're going to use um, 0.6 grams, of 0.6 kilograms, so this is 600 grams of CO2 to make a single uh, water bottle is reusable and it's going to, uh, if we recycle it, we can again recover about a quarter of the CO2. A, steel, a stainless steel water bottle, here we're using, uh, let's see which one we're using, we're, we're using 304 stainless steel food grade. Uh, this will result in the consumption of one kilogram of carbon, but if we recycle it, we can recover almost half, more than half, of the carbon used. So a lot of different options available, um, but you can certainly see that uh, compared to even a re reusable water bottle to a single-use water bottle, let's go down to the end here, single-use will use 43 grams of carbon. Uh, if, if we recycle it, we can cut, it cut that down to maybe 30 grams. A plastic bottle will use uh, 600 grams of carbon. That's, uh, this is a reusable kind of a permanent plastic bottle. When we cut that down by recycling it, we're left with maybe 400 grams, so about 10 times as much as a, a single-use water bottle. So even if you use a reusable water bottle 10 times, you're probably better off for the environment compared to using a single-use water bottle. So that's a quick example of how you can use ANSYS CS selector to do some eco-audit and carbon and energy footprint analysis. There's a lot more data available for all of our materials, as you can see here. So in addition to uh, recycling end of life, we have geoeconomic data recycling, as, as well as all of the different types of uh, uses you can use for each material. So lots of data available, and it's a great tool to quickly analyze the carbon footprint. So I thought it was a fun effort to undertake. Hopefully, hopefully enjoyed it. If there's any questions, you're welcome to reach out to us at singularity.eng.com and have a nice day.